I also had to learn this about myself that I I shouldn't plot because then I lose interest. Mm -hmm. And also my just everything falls into place anyway at the Mm -hmm. end. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have Julia Sterling. Yes, Julia is a German author, and it was such a great interview. So Mm -hmm. insightful. Mm -hmm. Yep. We talked to her about translating your books into German, like when you should do that. Um, Just kind of tips for covers. Mm -hmm. um, Translation in general. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Translation in general. So, yeah. So we had a great time talking with Mm -hmm. her, Mm -hmm. and she does a German promotion. Mm -hmm. similar to the Zoe Bub and also a conference Mm -hmm. that they're having like the first kind of indie publishing conference there. It's very exciting to talk to her about that. So that's all coming up. Yeah. So you got any news? Cause we're recording this the day after we recorded the last one, because we're trying to get shows ready for you guys for the hot through the holidays. So, yeah. So yeah, we're a little thin on news. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I know some of you are just going to be so sad so about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't really have anything new um, to talk about except just been doing admin today. And that's not mm-hmm. really super exciting. But, um, yeah. That's like all I got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything else except to say, I'm still running my branding special. If anybody is interested, $125. That's more than $100 off my consulting. And the the calls that I've had so far have been so much fun. And um, and I think they've helped. I mean, you know, it's it, it's sort of helped me see some things about branding that I had really not thought about, uh, just from questions, you know, that are being asked. But um, I sort of think that. Um, what I'm noticing is that with AI and things coming along, you know, you're, you know, having a real strong fan base that knows you mm-hmm. um, is important, but also having this really strong author brand um, can be important going forward. And um, anyway, yeah, it's been super fun. So if you're interested, you can email me or uh, go to my website. All of that's in the show notes if you're interested. Yep. All those links will be in there. Yep. So, yep. all right. Well, I all guess right. we should get on with Julia's interview. Let's do that. All right. Here, here's, here's Julia. Today, we're really happy to talk with Julia Sterling. Hi, Julia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We are great. We are so happy you're here. Yes. So Thanks. let me read your bio and we'll get right into the questions. Julia Sterling is a German romance author who writes time travel and small town romance. Before Mm -hmm. she started her career as a romance novelist, her corporate job took her to North Carolina, where she lived and worked for four years. This experience paved the way to her true passions, coaching, personal development, and, of course, writing romance novels. In addition to writing books, she organizes promotional events for romance novels in Germany, a a local equivalent to Zoe Bub, and hosts a conference for for German romance novelist. Julia's home is in Heidelberg, where she lives with her husband, their two children, her parents, and a dog within romantic vineyards. Sounds mm. lovely. It does sound lovely. It does. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, tell us how you got into writing. Um, as many authors, I always wanted to be a writer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to write children's books because that was what I was reading. Mm-hmm. But then I... Um, ventured into journalism and I started biology to become a science journalist. Mm. And, um, but while I was um, still in university, I uh, found uh, the books of um, Diana Gabaldon, uh, Mm. Mm -hmm. and I found out that she was a um, biology professor. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, that gave me permission that I was allowed to write as well, because I always thought like, I'm, I'm a science journalist. I'm, 
I'm I'm a biology major. I'm not allowed to write mm-hmm, mm-hmm. romance novels, and mm-hmm. but she did. So it was like mm-hmm. that was the first time I got permission to do it, and so um, there were a lot of permissions later as well. Yeah, <laughs> and then it took me like I don't know 19 years um, to finally self-publish my first book because before that I always kept abandoning uh, manuscripts. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I always started them and then I didn't want to go through this whole gatekeeper traditional publishing process. And so mm-hmm. I just, yeah, um, it took me a long time, and but now I'm here and I'm happy. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. I love that. Yeah. I love Outlander. All things Outlander, those books. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Was, oh, it turned is, my world around. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting how if you can see somebody else doing something similar, like if they have some sort of similarity to you, it does give you that ability to think, oh, I could do this too. So yeah, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is your definition of success? Who? So I had a German podcast where we interviewed women who had um, integrated their passion into their lives. And Mm -hmm. um, so we interviewed them. And before we started it, I did it with a friend. We we said, like, when is the, the podcast a success? And we said, um, when we changed one person's life. Mm-hmm. And we already achieved that before we started because we um, recorded, I don't know, 20 interviews or so mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. before we started. And that changed our lives and, mm-hmm. and also sometimes the lives of the women because it was so inspiring and with all the talking that we did. And so it was so... Um, relaxed when we um published or uh, the the podcast mm-hmm. that the the pressure was off because we mm-hmm. had already achieved what we thought was a success and it, of course it went on and there were more successes but it already felt good when we started and so i adopted that when i started publishing first it was just just finishing the book because mm-hmm. i always had trouble yeah. finishing books <laughs> <laughs> me too and <laughs> And then, um, and then publishing it, and that was already a success. And so, since then, I'm just happy doing whatever it is. And of course, sometimes I have goals, mm-hmm. but I, from the beginning, it felt like a success because mm-hmm. I had mastered to write the book and publish it, and people mm-hmm. were reading it. And the first week, I remember I published it, and I didn't look at the numbers for the first week, <laughs> and um. That was good, and that, because then I had like I don't know four thousand page reads, and oh wow, nine sold copies after the first week, and it was like I was in heaven, <laughs> and so that was the best <laughs> the best time I looked at the numbers. So yeah, that's great, that's yeah. great. Well, what do you wish you'd known about writing in craft when you started? Mm, I wish um, I'd known myself better, a oh, lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Um that's a great answer. Because I I always thought I had to do it a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um be, as I said, I I was still in university. Now I'm 44. Mm-hmm. Um and I always li- listened to pod no, not then. I didn't listen to podcasts. <laughs> it was 2001. Uh, but I read books and later I listened to podcasts and so on. And people um always said stuff like you have to you have, you have to do the first draft and then you have to revise it. You have to print it out and to mark it with a pen or whatever, and then transfer it back to the, to your laptop. I'm like, oh, God, I can't do that. <laughs> That's just and, too much work. Yes. I, I, I hate editing. I hate it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I know some people love it, but I just hate it. And I thought something was wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just started the next manuscript and never finished because mm-hmm. I, didn't want to revise it and then um i i stumbled upon the uh cycling method by dean wesley smith mm-hmm. that you just write and editing by writing it when you're done you're done and i send it off to the editor and since i've been doing this everything's fine and it's just mm. it's just uh, i can publish now the books mm-hmm. and really fast um because i i know that's how i am mm-hmm. and um i have uh, a coaching training so i'm a coach and I'm interested in all the coaching and personal development stuff. And so now I know myself so much better. And if I'd known that earlier, I would have published earlier. Mm-hmm. And 
but it's fine. It's yeah. that was just my way to, yeah. to go. But I wish I I would have known myself better. Yes. Yeah. I love that, and and I love that you found something that you can do that that really does fit right in with your who you are and your personality. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm still still trying to find my way. Yeah. Because I so- change things, I guess. Uh, do you plot? Not really. No, um, see, I change I, so much. I always, the time. Tr- I always tried, but then I... Um, so from my strengths pers- perspective, I'm also futuristic. Mm, mm-hmm. And when I plot, the book is written. Yes, it's like yes. I'm done mm-hmm. and I'm not interested in the book anymore because I, I also write to entertain myself and um, I'm just, I'm just not interested in the book anymore. It's the same <laughs> with, but the books I've written and published when readers want to talk to me about them. Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yes. I can't remember. It's like, Oh yeah, that guy, right. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're done. Yes, and it's, yeah. um, it's, I also had to learn this about myself that I, I shouldn't plot because then I lose interest mm-hmm. and also my just everything falls into place anyway at the mm-hmm. end. Mm-hmm. So it's fine. I just, I learn to trust the process and myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I'm on book 24 now or something. So mm-hmm. I know, even though sometimes in the middle, I'm always like this time, everything <laughs> goes wrong <laughs> this time it will not work it's out it's always worked end, in the past <laughs> it does it always does but we um, always doubt ourselves don't we like it's yes. always worked yeah. even yeah. like I don't always write a book the same way every time you know sometimes mm-hmm. I'll outline sometimes I'll have a loose idea jotted down outline not anything formal sometimes I use images but there's always that point when you're like slightly terrified it's just not going to happen even though we yeah. have you know in the past we can look back so I guess that's just typical of all writers no matter how we write I think we're yes and accepting this yes mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you when you know yourself you know that you will work through it somehow mm-hmm. yeah. it will always work out so right. um and to have this trust in yourself that's so important right. to just stay calm and, yeah. and carry Don't on panic. <laughs> yes. no panic <laughs> well what about marketing what do you wish I'd, you'd known about marketing um I think it's the same answer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. um I was very lucky um that right from the beginning I um I found the things that work for me mm. um, even though I didn't know myself that that well in the beginning um I had this coaching business before and I knew that a newsletter was important. So I um, set up a newsletter from the beginning mm-hmm. and started to write it. The soon, uh, the, the second a, a person uh, signed up That's who nice. I didn't know, yeah. yeah, which was weird because <laughs> what I, I think like two months or so, I just wrote newsletters to one person, Oh my goodness! <laughs> but I pretended <laughs> it were like 100. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And, but then it was really, um, I, I also, um, listened to a podcast with Lucy score Mm -hmm. and she said that she has always this bonus scenes in the end, um, where people have to sign up for the newsletter to get the bonus scenes. Mm -hmm. So I did this from book one for each book, for each book, I have a, a, I don't know. I have very long bonus material. Like it's one time I wrote the same story from, um the point of view of the guy because really is your yes. bonus material yes oh I, my it got, goodness it gotten out of hand a little bit <laughs> <laughs> I but bet it, your I, readers love that though because it's like a whole nother story yeah, right it like is it is yeah the, so the couple was apart for for eight years and I had to tell what happened to him in those mm-hmm. eight years mm-hmm. and um so and yeah, they get very long material. I, I do serials in my newsletter, um, mm. and then I publish them as a book later. Mm-hmm. I um, so I, f- I found that the newsletter is the right medium for me because I can mm-hmm. talk to my, my readers. I um, I know that I can entertain them. I mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I do videos for them. So I think, and if I had known myself better mm-hmm. um, from the beginning. I would have come there even faster, but I think mm-hmm. it, it was already quite fast. I, I um, yeah, 
That so is, how do you do the videos? Uh, like, what do you mean how? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you just them, talk to them, them or do you just? Yeah, I, I mostly I, um, so I just do uh, myself with my, with my um, cell phone. Mm -hmm. And then I just talk about what I normally would write down. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I also write it down because there are so many people who can't can yeah. uh, watch videos because they are at work or whatever mm -hmm, yeah. or they don't have headphones on mm -hmm. or they don't want to watch a video mm -hmm. so I um, also write this, the same stuff but I'm just um, when I'm really excited about something I want to show a cover I always do cover reveals first in my newsletter mm -hmm. um, sometimes I do cover reveals as a um, as a postcard so I send them physical postcards mm. oh wow um, awesome. and when I tell them that this is up then I will I would do a video or I, um, I'm not doing video every time because then I have to wash my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why we're not on YouTube. I mean, you don't see our face on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. We, we totally understand that. <laughs> and um, what I also do is I, um, I have a, like a, a reader team that mm -hmm. for every book, but I, um, they can apply for it um, for every book. I don't have a, a team that is always there so they always can apply and then I will choose or I will just I don't know draw the winners yeah. mm -hmm. and um, I get like 500 um, applications for that and <laughs> I always do the video to to tell them that this is um, going to happen so oh, that's yeah. awesome um, that's just yeah. such great ideas yeah and your your serial or you said you write you do serials in your newsletter is that like based off of characters in the books they've already read, or is it something totally new? How do you do that? Mm, so I had this, I have this time travel series. Mm -hmm. And um, in the first book in the series, there's this guy. Um, and we don't, we, we don't know his story because it's only from the women's point of view. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he's looking for his sister. He's a time traveler himself and he's looking for his sister and his mom. Mm. And he can't find them because they are some somewhere lost in in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, readers always ask me, so what happened to the sister and the mom? Okay. Mm. And so I had to somehow solve this, and then I um, thought, okay, nobody would be interested in it um, if they hadn't read the other books. So my readers would be interested, and so I started writing that as a serial. Oh. It gotten out of hand as well. <laughs> it's my longest book ever. <laughs> But I had a lot of fun doing it and I, I send it every week for 10 months and yeah, it was mm. great. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. I love that. Your, your people must love being on your newsletter. Yeah. They stay. I really, I, I have, it's rare that somebody un unsubscribes. Mm. So because mm -hmm. just, um, I well, you're giving there. value, you're giving value. And I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what assumptions did you make at the beginning of your writing career and looking back, did they turn out to be right or wrong? Um, I thought that mm -hmm. you can't make money in the yeah. German market. <laughs> <laughs> and your books are all in German, right? They are all in yeah. German. Yes. Um, yeah. I've translated a few, but the translation weren't, weren't good. Uh, mm -hmm. Into English, and the English market is so hard. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and mm -hmm. in the beginning, I thought that the um, it was it would be easier to publish in English, and mm -hmm. that the German books would just be a byproduct mm -hmm. of my business. And it completely turned out the other way. I mm -hmm. was very wrong about that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The German market is small, but it's mm -hmm. still we have lots of readers who are also. Mm -hmm. um, who do pay money for the books. They yeah. like to pay, uh, like they're used to paying money to, for books. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Because we have a we have a law in Germany mm -hmm. that you have um, um, books have to um, always have the same price. It's like, it's you can't change the price. Oh, really? Much. Uh, when you're on one platform, only on, on Amazon, it's, it's um, okay mm -hmm. um, to change the price, but you can't, do it like too often. Mm -hmm. And if you're on different platforms, you can have a different price, especially not with print books. Um, if you have set a price, that's the price. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's an it's an old law. It's weird. Mm -hmm. But readers are used to paying money for books. Mm -hmm. And they do. So it's awesome. um it is if you have a loyal readership, mm -hmm. um you you really can earn some money here. It's that's possible. amazing. That's great. 
I love that. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. you, so the thing is you can't, you can have a different price for your ebook and your print book. Yes. You can't yes. be, they don't want you changing the prices on those constantly. Right. Like, yeah. Up and down. Okay. I mean, nobody's really there's monitoring no it that much. Yeah. But it's, um, if you go to a normal bookstore, it's, it's really hard to, they can't discount books, um, like all the time. This, this, mm-hmm. it's, the, the law is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. just a different market. And would you say that like mm-hmm. the eBooks or e-readers reading in digital is growing there or do people, do people read more in print or in ebook? Do you think? Mm-hmm. Since the pandemic? On- genre Mm -hmm. um a little bit on genre and so i think um the fantasy readers they love um uh still love their 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 print books Mm -hmm. with the um they have the glitter on the (laughs) on the cover and stuff like that um but they also do read um with an e-reader a lot um since the pandemic more people read um ebooks mm-hmm. and we saw that in the first um the first christmas um mm-hmm. was in 2020 mm-hmm. um many people got e-readers and oh, really? started reading that way and of course the romans readers who read a lot of course they have kindle unlimited mm-hmm. well so we're going to get more into german and translations mm-hmm. and stuff but we'll get into that and just we'll circle back um, we always want to ask though, too, what's the most important lesson you've learned? Um, I think it's again about, <laughs> about myself. Knowing yourself. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it always comes back, back to that. And mm-hmm. also to know what works for me right. and what works for somebody else doesn't necessarily mean it has to work for me and I don't have to be disappointed, but I also, I can try, Mm -hmm. but I, I also change planes very fast. Mm -hmm. Um, If, or I try things out and if they don't work, I don't, I don't do them anymore, but I can Mm -hmm. feel it. Yeah. I can feel it really quickly (laughs) Um, that uh, what, what is good for me and whatnot. And also like, taking this seriously and thinking it's a business Mm -hmm. and it's not Mm -hmm. just a hobby that I do on the side or um, really treating it with a business mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is something sometimes that I miss um, with my peers that Mm -hmm. some of them are just not, they are just, no, I'm, I'm a creative. Yes, you are, Mm -hmm. but it's also a business. And this Mm -hmm. is what I, this is the biggest lesson lesson that I had to learn that we also have to earn money mm-hmm. if we want to do this long term, right? Mm-hmm. Or at least if I want to do this long term, I right. have to earn money, right? right Let's put right. it that way. I yes. can only talk about myself. That's correct. That's correct. Well, if you were starting over today, what would you do differently? Mm, I think it depends on when. To, to which time I look back. If I look mm. back to the 20 years when I was mm-hmm. still in university, um, I think I would go really fast to um, getting to know myself and my process better mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, also going straight to romance novels because I in the beginning I thought I was uh, wanted to write historicals. Mm-hmm. and But the... It took me some time to find that I always like the love story in the uh, in the historical. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, this is my I just I just love the feeling um, of love. It's just mm-hmm. and giving this to readers and giving them a good time. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's important. So I would go straight to Romans and um, I never tried. to. Um, no, I never really tried to to uh, publish at a big publishing house. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I would try to speed up self-publishing if I, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Um, going straight there because, um, yeah. and I thought, so when I, I published my first book four years ago, three and a half years ago, and then I, I wrote a historical romance, then I wrote time travel, and then I wrote small town romance. Mm-hmm. And I thought, at that time, 
I should have um, taken different pen names mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for each uh, subgenre. But now I think it's actually a good thing because my readers, I take them with me because mm -hmm. they like me as a person. Mm -hmm. Right. That, as a, um, and because my, my books are always the same. They always mm -hmm. get give you the same feeling. They have the mm -hmm. same heat level. Yep. Everything. The character development is in a, a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so I can take readers with me and I couldn't have done this if I had different pen names and would have been so much harder. So I think I wouldn't change that much. Okay. I that's would still great. go for the newsletter. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. Can't go I was really that. smart. Yeah. I was lucky to, to get the right information at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the German market. And mm -hmm. so I think a lot of authors, we, we hear that, German is a good language to translate into. Is there a certain, do you have any advice like when authors should do that? Should you wait until you have a certain couple of books or? Mm. Hmm. That's a very good question. Um, mm -hmm. I think you're, you, um, you shouldn't start doing translations if you can do only one or two books. Mm. Um and that not only means that you have that you only have those books, but you mm -hmm. also you you are able to translate them to to pay um, for the cost of translation mm -hmm. yeah. um, because translations are so expensive. And mm -hmm. yes, you can use um, AI for it, but it's you can you can read it like you can hear it. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds differently if uh, when AI, AI translated it. So I would try to go with a, um, a German translator um, if possible, but it's so much more expensive, but mm -hmm. I think it's worth it in the end mm -hmm. um, because some readers don't, don't see it, but the majority does. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, it's just not, it doesn't flow mm -hmm. because German language is, is uh, it's a little bit complex sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I would, try to save some money to get, I don't know, at least five, six, seven, or maybe more books done and then publish them quite fast. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the same how you would um, do rapid release maybe um, uh, in the US market mm -hmm. and uh, always have the next book on pre-order and stuff like that. Right. Um, and also do a newsletter mm -hmm. and and how somehow communicate with your readers because... Um, they they really do like that. Mm. Um, if you uh, um, if they see that you're a person and it's not just a um, yeah a book that you right. um, that maybe may, may, even might have been written by AI because yeah. they don't know they don't know right. Yeah. Well, so, would you suggest that like we do a newsletter and have it translated to German or yeah. Yes, something like that. Or have a um there are some VAs mm -hmm. who specialize who are German and speak English very well, mm -hmm. who who could who could help you with that, also with um blurbs and stuff like mm -hmm. that too. Yeah, that's the get thing. the right yeah. feeling mm -hmm. for it. But mm -hmm. a newsletter you can also um translate with AI. That's no that's no problem at all. Mm -hmm. Um because they they know that you don't speak German. That's right. fine. Right. But if you right. um and you can and also say this newsletter is translated with AI, but I wrote it as, as specifically for my German readers. Right. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah, that is good to know. Okay. Any genres that tend to do better than others for German translation? Any genres or? Yeah. That, yeah. Which genres do the best? Let's do it that way. Yeah. Um. I think Romans always, mm -hmm. always sells mm -hmm. um, because the Germans, the German authors also, um, they set their books in the US mm -hmm. a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, so we have oh. many books who are set in New York, mm -hmm. uh, New York mm -hmm. City mm -hmm. um, or in California. Mm -hmm. And people just love that. Um, the German readers do love that. Um, the dark romances right now i mean everywhere mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. they just people like this a lot i don't <laughs> i'm too positive for that <laughs> I, just, I need happy times 
um, but it's they sell. Um, mm-hmm. You can see this in the chart. Um, also, interestingly, um, gay romance mm-hmm. is is mm-hmm. getting uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, like it's getting a lot more traction here. Um, mm-hmm. Lucy Lennox, I think, and Nora Phoenix, they are mm-hmm. selling quite well with their mm-hmm. translations. Then um, fantasy is a mm-hmm. genre that people like to read. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some who had some success. Um, yeah, I think also um, you're writing cozy mysteries, right, mm-hmm. Sarah? Yeah, yeah there is. Mm-hmm. I think even even that. Um, but it's the Germans. They, they had a tendency to just read the um, Scandinavian um, mysteries, like the, which mm-hmm. tend to be darker and grittier. Uh-huh. And- yes, <laughs> yes. But there was I think in the 2000s there was a time when everybody read them. Mm-hmm. It's gotten a little bit less. Um, <laughs> yeah, and. I think in the, but I've, what I've seen in the in the German uh, Kindle charts, mm-hmm. it's it's getting darker. Like mm. the the thrillers, the mm. the bloody cover, yeah. <laughs> they they come back. <laughs> um, during the pandemic, it was all just happy mm-hmm. pink right. and mm-hmm. light blue and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, and another important thing um, um, is that the Germans don't like the cartoonish covers in Romans. Mm. By the way. Yeah, oh, they okay. really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, it's starting a little bit, but mm-hmm. it's you can see immediately that it's in uh, an U.S. author most yeah. of the time, or yeah. it's a translation. Mm-hmm. And most people think it's like a children's book. Mm-hmm. They 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 don't buy covers like that. Right. So, well, yeah. I, you know, I've always been a little hesitant, and I've I've talked about this on the podcast, but about translating my books because they're com- romantic comedies mm-hmm. you know small town texas rom-coms and mm-hmm. the colloquialisms and you know things that i use such as useless as tits on a boar hog or you know happy as yeah. ticks on a goat might not translate to certain places <laughs> yeah it does yeah. not and, and so i didn't know if it would even be worth the money for me to translate comedies that are specific, you know, Texas, yeah. com- I mean, you know, it's pretty specific Texas comedy um, kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. I have a friend who lives in uh, North Carolina um, mm-hmm. and she's from there and she's also a writer. And I read her books. I'm like, I don't think they would translate because mm-hmm. it's so, they're so Southern and mm-hmm. most of the things are just, the, yeah. Yeah. The Germans don't get it because they, for them, it's just the U.S. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's New York or California. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Maybe Florida. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad to know that I probably have made the right decision on that one. Um, and then yeah, yeah, you know, maybe I'll turn take a turn for the dark side at some point, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. If if you do that, <laughs> you should translate. No, it's. It's really hard with the language. Mm-hmm. Um, I was always wondering, like um, Lucy Score books, um, mm-hmm. they have yeah. been translated and they're quite successful. So um, maybe I should read them and yes. let you know how, <laughs> yeah. how they translate because I read them in English. That's and right. um, there's also so much ah, in between the lines. We mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's so right. much... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I can read that. Like and subtext, maybe right? Tell you, yes. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. I would. Yeah. That would be an interesting um, thing to know because they do do well there. I know she's talked about it before. So yeah. yeah. Hmm. What about like um, women's fiction type books? The kind of book club books. Do mm-hmm. German readers want that or not? So we don't have book clubs like you do. Mm-hmm. Um, you also made a face when she said book club. <laughs> Which basically was like no. <laughs> I, no, I was, I was trying also to trying to think of a book um, that is a like a book club book, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so we don't have people don't know Oprah that well or mm-hmm. um, it's Reese with Witherspoon. Spoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like yeah, they know them from or Reese from from movies, but that's mm-hmm. it. And we don't have the same book club culture here, mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I don't think they, Mm -hmm. no, I don't know. Okay, (laughs) just curious. Good to know. 
Yeah. So tell us about your, um, how you're organizing the promotion that you say is similar, like a German Zoe bub. How have you gone mm -hmm. about that? Um, yeah. So actually I read Zoe's book. Mm -hmm. Um, can't remember the title. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, but in there, she, she said, like, if you want to organize something like that, um, mm -hmm feel free to do so because uh -huh. it's um, many people would would love to but it's really takes some some work I'm just like okay mm -hmm. I can do it <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I asked some some author friends and they agreed and um, I think we're now like 100 authors wow oh that's great two years now mm -hmm. um, but we only do it twice a year not not every three mm -hmm. uh, months and we accidentally ended up at this on the almost the same schedule as Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> and so we need to change this a little bit because mm -hmm. um because she has so many books in there mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh we yeah our books disappear Across. when mm -hmm. we have when we are on the um, we need the Kindle the the free Kindle charts for our <laughs> for our books yeah. on a different time. Yeah. Um but actually the, so there are many German readers who also read in English. Um mm -hmm. So it's also sometimes it really helps to um, to advertise to to German readers who who read English uh, books. Mm -hmm. um, and is it mostly romance centered? The ours uh, yeah, our yeah. our Zoe Bab. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. It's called actually in German it's called Ich liebe Bücher, um, which is um, I love books. Um, okay. In, in in English, yeah. Um, yes, we might just it's, call it a Julia Bob. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, can do that. I was yeah, muted, it's... but I said that that just rolls off the tongue um, <laughs> with my accent. That's yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, we have mostly romance and yeah, romantic fantasy um, yeah. books, but uh, we also do twice a year a 99 cent mm -hmm. um, promo. Mm -hmm. And this also works well. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. great. Cool. Well, I looked up uh, Zoe York's book. She has two nonfiction, Romance Your Brand and Romance Your Plan. So um, it was probably one of those, I imagine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, people tell, are curious. That yeah. In like case it. anybody, and we'll, can we put it in the show notes? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put them in the show and, notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give Zoe a little shout out there. Um, yeah. It was really good. Yeah. Uh, she's one of the most brilliant people I know. Like yeah, if very, Zoe very. says it, there are a few people like that for me. You know, if they say David Godwin, I'll do whatever. Yeah. Yes. Zoe, I will do. I mean, she's just so smart. She's so yeah. smart. I uh, reached out to her when when I, I read the book and I said like, okay, I will do it. And then I reached mm -hmm. out to her and she graciously wrote back and oh. told me a few things how to set it up and so on. So that was really, um, really yes. great. She's and awesome. I've been following her advice and yeah. it works like magic. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, tell us about your conference um, that you do for German authors. And yeah, you said so it's sort of like a RAM for German yes. authors, Romance Author Mastermind, but for it's not that, yes. but it's similar. Yeah. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm a learner junkie I, I always go to every <laughs> conference I go I always watch them online I buy all the tickets and it's, mm -hmm. it's so much fun um and I listen to all the podcasts I've been listening to your podcast I don't know for three or four years I don't know how long uh, you've, you've been doing it since 2020 from the beginning yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you and um so I've attended um Roman's author mastermind two times virtually mm -hmm. And I always wanted this for Germany because there are so many things that we can do. We, we mm -hmm. don't have a book bub here. So when mm -hmm. somebody tells you all about how to apply for a book bub, book bub deal, it's like, yeah, great. Can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and do mm -hmm. that. And uh, we have, for example, we also we don't have ACX here. So mm -hmm. if I ever wanted to do something with Audible, I can't. I, mm -hmm. I have to. I always have to hire my own narrator and it's mm -hmm. so expensive and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really different. Editing is so much more expensive, mm -hmm. all the things. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to do it here and I found another author, um, Annie Stone. And she, uh, she also, she's also a learner and she, she's a number one learner actually. Mm. And so we decided to do uh, it together. And yeah, so we put it together. The first one will be next February. Mm. And 
Uh, we have 50 participants now. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's great. It's really cool. And But we also found that uh, it's hard to find um, speakers because we we learn so much, the two of us, we learn so much through podcasts and books and mm -hmm. conferences and so on that we know a lot already. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we thought that we would learn something there. But then my, my husband at some point said, actually, you should say goodbye to the idea that you will learn something. Yes. <laughs> the, the participants will do, but yes, this is a service you're performing. It's not, yeah. <laughs> so, it's not for you, but yeah. uh, I actually invited um, Theodora Taylor, which is going to uh, be amazing. And I know I will learn something from her. Yes, I'm very sure will. about that. I mm -hmm. did all her courses and stuff. So it's, uh, yeah. but I, yeah, I'm so looking forward to that and yeah. bringing her to Germany. And it's, I think it's so important for um, authors mm -hmm. to connect better and to we are all in the same industry. We are not mm -hmm. competitors for me. No. I, I I just I think it's important to to work together mm -hmm. to yeah, so we can all succeed. Mm -hmm. And it's always better to do to do this in person, not not just online. So right. Right. Yeah. Um, that's what I was gonna say that even though you may not gain more knowledge about the industry or about mm -hmm. specific things the connections and friendships mm -hmm. that will develop will like be yeah. they'll be amazing and yeah. so that will probably be what yeah you'll be happiest about <laughs> right yes right and it's um for example we had um we have those two big book fairs in germany one mm -hmm. is frankfurt and the other mm -hmm. one is Leips leipzig mm -hmm. and um so i went to the leipzig fair in april and we went to a dinner together, some some authors, and there I found my VA um, that I hired right away. Yeah. And so th these are the kind of information that you mm -hmm. only get when you you are together and mm -hmm. you talk and yeah. not just, yeah, yeah, see each other online in Facebook groups or so. Right. Mm -hmm. And listen, I mean, I learned something from listening to Theodora order lunch. I mean, she's just yes. amazing. She just. <laughs> has such great insight your people are gonna love her so much i'm, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> well is registration still open for this if someone's listening and they're interested yes okay. yes well, it's still open yeah we okay. can put so, that link in the yeah. show notes will you send it to us yeah i can do that it's That'd only in german though it's, that's okay <laughs> If, okay. if they're German and they will, yes. <laughs> they have to speak German. Theodora is the only one who will um, speak in English, and we have somebody who translates. Uh, so yeah. that'll be great. That will be great. Well, it, I think it's great to see other countries kind of coming along in self publishing mm -hmm. and developing their own mm -hmm. courses and conferences mm -hmm. and promotions. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, it's it's showing that the industry is maturing. Mm -hmm. around the world and I think Germany kind of leads the way like romance always leads the way for promotion I think Germany is probably the language in the country that's more interested in digital right now in ebooks and so yeah. they're more open to self-publishing I think than than some other countries I don't know I don't yes. know if you agree with that or not yeah yeah I think so too um it's yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> So I, I do mean, have a question. Oh, go ahead. No, fine. Okay. Well, I was just going to ask about the um, running ads. If you have, it, because German readers do read in English, if you were to run ads to Germany, everything should just be in English, correct? If your book is in English. If your book is in English, yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, you can also, I mean, with Facebook, you can also target um, mm -hmm. people who live in Germany, mm -hmm. but also who who speak English. So mm -hmm. you can you yeah, can target, yeah, yeah. Them, target them. Mm -hmm. I would be happy if I got recommendations on Facebook in English. Right. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> and I, I well, think, I may try just to see if. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it's I think they're not as expensive as mm -hmm. they are in the US. Mm -hmm. Um, so the prices are really different. Right. Um, when I'm co I'm coaching um with my marketing coach and she's mm -hmm. looking at my numbers it's like she's like, that's that's really cheap <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's uh yeah well, well is there awesome. anything else that you think um in people who write in english but want to sell books in german should know about or any any 
other advice that you think we should talk about? Mm, so the translator, we had this already. The cover is, I think it's really mm -hmm. important. I think that's what most people miss. Um, Sorry. They just use their their English cover and you can see it um, okay. because we have a lot less Manchester, I, mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> um And it's yeah, it's they're they're just different. So maybe reach out to to um, German cover designers. Mm -hmm. um, most of them do speak English well. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm even thinking. Well, I'm starting to think again. Um, if we can maybe put something together, like to have uh, German cover designers who speak English, um, mm -hmm. who who could be a, a good source for um, English speaking. Um, authors mm. yeah. yeah and I, know, because I do know some authors who are like oh I'll just use my English cover because it, it will be so much cheaper and easier because you know I can just get it really quick but maybe in the long run that may not be the best choice right yeah yeah just just take a look at the the, the German um, mm -hmm. Kindle store mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just look at the covers it's a different feel mm -hmm. um, and it's the same when we um, publish our books in English we need to right. also change the covers um, mm -hmm. Because they're not interesting enough for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the Germans are they're a little bit more um, pragmatic about mm -hmm. things. They mm -hmm. use different fonts and mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, that's an yeah. I, I would always go for a newsletter or s some way to to connect with readers, mm -hmm. um, just so they get a feel for you. So if you have bonus scenes and stuff, it, it's I think it's worth it mm -hmm. to build a newsletter. Um, through that and mm -hmm. maybe find a VA in Germany if you really want to go deep um, who can help you with that there are right. a few people who do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah I think that's that's about that's a, it that's, that's enough to get started right? uh, I think that's yeah. great <laughs> well tell us what you think the best thing you've done to set yourself up for success has been hmm Oh, uh, interesting. Um, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's really trusting myself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and listening to my gut mm -hmm. to to know, um, yeah, to listen listening to all the advice, but only following the ones that really work for me. Right. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Being discerning about what you hear and does it fit with you? Yeah. And in the beginning, I, it's, it's hard to do that because it's mm -hmm. so much, mm -hmm. it's, it, there's so much out there yeah. and um, you think you have to do it all, right? but you don't mm -hmm. and pick the things that work for you. Right. And um, yeah, it, for example, I, What I do sometimes at um, at Christmas, mm -hmm. I tell my readers that I um, they can win a book for for somebody else, but they have to tell me who it is um, mm -hmm. and why. Mm -hmm. And so and so they sent me all those this notes like I want to win a book for my mother in law because she's always there for me and, and no, uh, help so me lovely. with the children and yeah. stuff, or, or for my friend who's sick. And mm -hmm. and most of the time I. I don't choose winners. I, I I don't draw them. I just send them all. Yeah, because it's yeah. so much fun, and I love it. And then I I and it's a win 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 situation. So mm -hmm. the last time I did it was like 200 books last year. Mm -hmm. But I signed them all for like um, your friend Sasha, whatever, mm -hmm. won this book for you, mm -hmm. and it was it was really a win 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 situation. Um, For, for everybody. And I got so many new readers out of that. Mm -hmm. But there were so many people who told me that it was crazy because it was too much money and mm -hmm. it was too expensive mm -hmm. and all this time sitting there and writing it. And right. um, I was spoiling my readers and stuff. Yeah. Yes, maybe. But for me, it worked so well. It felt yeah. so right. And mm -hmm. I still have people who's, uh, who um, write me and say, oh, the first book I got was from your friend. Uh, mm -hmm. from a friend who wanted for me and mm -hmm. I read all the other books and it's so great and already told other people and it's just that makes me happy and if yeah. I had followed other people's advice yeah I wouldn't have done that nope. and 
So yeah. yeah. And and it, and you were doing something that is probably the most important thing uh, is building fandom. I mean, you're just building your fan base, not not just with the people who read your book for the first time, but it's goodwill towards your current readers. And mm-hmm. I mean, I think as we move forward with AI and all of that, it is going to be so much more important to have that fan base that really knows who we are and who and knows we want to know them and want to engage with them. And so I think, yeah. that's, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And it's really that I, I really like them. I, it's, mm-hmm. I generally like my readers and um, I think that shows and I allow myself, uh, I give myself permission actually to mm-hmm. do that. And I yeah. had to give myself permission like actively yes. and uh, because it's not very common to do so, but mm-hmm. this is also why I think if you, translations on the German market Mm -hmm. go for a newsletter get to know your readers Mm -hmm. they are very they're very sweet sometimes they're Mm -hmm. they are just um they're lovely so that's awesome great advice great advice and it's interesting because you're not only creating a connection between you and the reader, but also between your readers. Like, mm-hmm. yes. because if somebody reads that book, they can say, Oh, thank you for recommending this to me. And then those two readers can talk mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's good yeah. all the way around. Yeah. I think it's very yeah. exciting. I love that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, also <laughs> tell everybody where they can find your books in your um, conference and all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the problem is my my website. Everything is just in German. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so if you read German, mm-hmm. it's um, uh, Julia uh, Julia Sterling dot com. Um, at least it's a dot com d- domain. So if you find a de at the end, it's actually not Denmark. Most people think it's Denmark. That's <laughs> Germany because we have the name is Deutschland. <laughs> yeah. mm. And um, yes, we have um, the RomansCon dot de. Um, okay. that's our conference and uh, yeah my books are mostly on amazon i'm in ku so uh-huh. because wide is in germany is not yes yeah. not yeah. the thing not the okay. thing right now all right well we will have all those links in the show notes and um just thank you for coming on and sharing all this kind of the insights about germany it's been great to talk to you mm-hmm. thank it you for has. having me you're welcome <laughs> Yeah. So we'll have all those links at wish I'd known for writers.com. And if you want to support the podcast, you can go to that same link slash support. And thanks to Alexa Larberg for editing and producing the podcast and to Adriel Wiggins for doing the admin. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to the wish I'd known then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.